Hello and welcome back. iPadOS 18.4 is now generally available, and as I'm sure you've heard by now, it does not contain the new Smarter Siri, and we won't be seeing that Siri for quite some time. But even without that much anticipated feature, there's still some good new features in this release, more than I thought before I started putting this video together. And that's what we're going to go over, so let's get started. 18.4 brings the mail categorization feature that's been on the iPhone over to the iPad. How this works is using on-device machine learning, your mail will get automatically sorted into a few predefined categories. So first you have the primary category, and these are messages that are determined to be the most important to you. Some of the metrics that are used are an implied time sensitivity, or if the message is from someone you know versus an unknown contact. Transactions are order receipts, confirmations, order updates, delivery messages, things of that nature. Updates are where things like newsletters you sign up for, social media updates, news updates, we'll go with here. And promotions, like the name implies, are those fun promotional messages we get from stores we shop at letting us know about sales and deals and all of that nonsense. Now, if you tap on a category that's already selected, you get brought to this somewhat invisible all mail view, which shows you everything. And if it turns out you don't like the categories, you can turn them off by going to the top of the inbox pane, tapping on the ellipsis, the three dots there, and you can just switch to the list view, and you don't have to worry about the categories at all. Priority notifications. So this is an Apple intelligence feature that analyzes your incoming notifications to determine which ones are high priority and which ones can wait. These notifications will appear prominently above others in Notification Center, and they kind of have their own section there. You have the option to either enable or disable priority notifications on a per app basis in Settings. That's going to Settings, Notifications, Prioritize Notifications, and you can make the changes you want there. Image Playground, which is the Apple Intelligence powered image generation app, gets a small update in 18.4. In addition to the existing styles of animation and illustration, there's now a sketch style when you're generating your images. And like the name would imply, it allows you to generate images in a style that's evocative of an artist creating a pencil sketch, I guess is a good way to say that. I'm still a little mad with how large Apple Intelligence thinks I am. I guess it's a good sign to make some changes on my end. And while we're talking about Apple Intelligence, 18.4 also adds additional language support such as French, German, and Italian, as well as support for English in additional locales like India and Singapore. If you're a subscriber to Apple's News Plus service, 18.4 now adds a dedicated food section to the News app. Now this section will surface not only curated recipes from Apple's news partners, but will also give you a centralized place for news articles about nutrition, healthy eating, and other food-related topics. So if you tap on one of the curated recipes, you get this really nice looking interface that gives you all of the ingredients. It gives you the directions on how to prepare the dish. And if you tap on the cook button, you enter this cooking mode, which guides you step by step through preparing the recipe. What's cool is if, if there's a call out for the amount of time something's supposed to cook, you can set a timer right from that interface. It's kind of cool. If you like that recipe, you can go ahead and save it. And there is a dedicated saved recipes section in your library where you can view all the recipes that you've saved. I'm not an Apple News user, but I really like this interface and the way this is put together. In the written version of this video, I linked to an Emojipedia article that talks about the new emoji in this update. I find it really hard to get too excited about these, but there are a handful of new emoji that are in this update. I think my favorite would be the face with bags under its eyes, because I feel like that's me every day. Control Center gets a couple new features in this update as well. First, we can now play ambient background music in one of four predefined categories, sleep, chill, productivity, and well-being. Now these actually trigger playlists, so when you add this to your Control Center and start playing one, you can actually see the individual tracks in the Now Playing widget, and you can skip back and forth through the playlist as you'd like. Next, what used to be the Siri section in Control Center has now been renamed Apple Intelligence and Siri. In addition, we get an additional toggle in this section, and that's for triggering a Talk to Siri interaction, which joins the existing Type to Siri toggle we've had before, and those toggles work just like you would think. Tap on Type to Siri, you get the Type to Siri interface, 
Tap on Talk to Siri, you get the Voice Siri interface. We get a couple new widgets from the podcast app and they relate to showing content from your library. So the first widget will show content from a specific list, like latest episodes, recently downloaded, things like that. And the other will show content from a specific show. So if there's one show you care about more than others and you want it on your home screen, you are now able to do that with this widget. Late last year, the Matter standard was updated with support for robot vacuums. And with iPadOS 18.4, iPad gains compatibility with those same vacuums through the Home app. Now, I don't have a compatible robot vacuum, or really any robot vacuum, to show you that with, but I will put a link in the description to this website I found that has a list of robot vacuums that are Matter compatible out of the box, supposedly. And you can check that out and see if that's something you're interested in. With Home App compatibility, it means that you'll be able to add these vacuums to the Home App and then control the hardware via different scenes and automations. We get a couple of small changes related to the App Store. First, starting in 18.4, Apple's going to be slowly rolling out a AI-generated summary of App Store reviews for individual apps. So in theory, you at least have a hopefully accurate summary of what the consensus is on an app without having to go through each of the reviews. Now, Apple notes this is rolling out slowly, and it's going to start in English and only on certain apps that have a sufficient number of reviews. When I went looking for this video, I couldn't find any. What Apple indicates we'll see more over time. And also, if you're downloading a large app like a game, you can now pause that download in the App Store and resume it when it's more convenient for you. We get another option in the default apps list. This one's a little strange. It's setting a, a default translation app, which I guess is a thing you'd want to do. And if so, here it is. There are a couple changes of note in the Shortcuts app. First, there is a new action for opening a specific conversation in the Messages app instead of just jumping to the Messages app. Which I can add that action here. Pick a user. I only have one contact. And I jump right to that conversation which is nice if that is a thing that you've wanted to do. Next, there have been some additional actions added for controlling settings in some of the first party Apple apps. I'm gonna show it here in Reminders, but it's also in Calendar and a few others. The theory is, is that these actions are here in 18.4 because they're supposed to be part of the new Siri that's able to interact more with your apps and control settings and do things on your behalf. So obviously the new Siri isn't coming anytime soon, so we have these actions right now and can use them in our automations if they make sense. If you have the AirPods Max with USB-C, iPadOS 18.4 plus a firmware update will enable both ultra low latency audio and lossless audio for your headphones. This is essentially adding the missing wired audio support from the USB-C AirPods Max that wasn't there at launch. And that really makes these much more versatile because you can use them with things like game consoles like the Switch or the ROG Ally or using them on a plane for the in-flight entertainment. Scenarios where it still might make sense to use a wire versus wireless audio. So in terms of general stability and battery life and things like that, I found 18.4 to be a pretty stable beta pretty much through the whole process. I didn't have any point where I was noticing extreme battery drain or hitches or glitches or anything like that. When you get to the point fours, you, you would hope that the beta releases are more stable because fewer things are going to be changing as Apple's getting ready for WWDC and the new software updates coming there. I don't have any apprehension about upgrading the 18.4 on my primary iPad once it becomes generally available. That's going to do it for this one. Thanks for sticking with me. Really appreciate it. If you could like the video and subscribe on your way out, that would help me out a bunch. And I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.